Good. A- <clears throat> Try them again. Good afternoon. Welcome to my broadcast. <laughs> that choked on the beginning. Um, before we jump in, the topic today is about generosity and how generous are you in a relationship, and I mean in all ways. And I'll explain what I mean by that because there's a subtlety that you might be missing if you think you're a generous person. Before I get into all that, though, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day. And by the way, this is a Sunday broadcast, hence the casual attire. Like an excuse. My name is Barry Selby. I am an inspirational, inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and an author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. There's another book coming soon too, by the way, um, which is a great book and I'm very biased about it because I wrote it. I am also um, help women create balance in love, life and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's what informs my work. I'm what started these talks almost three years ago now. Um, I can't see my broadcast. This is episode number 871, because again, I've done a bunch of these. And the topic today is about how generous are you in a relationship. So I'm going to be generosity, but I'm going to play with some perspective just to give you something to consider. Because you might be saying, oh yeah, I give all the time. I'm always generous and I give in relationships. Maybe, maybe not. So stay tuned. There's some things I'm going to play with here. And by the way, this is a Facebook Live I'm doing in case you wondered who I just spoke to. That was somebody who's watching my Facebook Live and their name popped up. If you're watching this on YouTube, Sorry, you won't see who I'm talking to, so I'll attempt to repeat any comments they post so you know what I'm responding to. Otherwise, watch me on Facebook Live and I'll tell you all about the links where you can find the replays and where you can catch me live at the end of the broadcast because that's what some of you want. And so now I think I've done enough preamble. Let's jump in, shall we? So, generosity in relationship. It's not quite as easy as you think. You can say that you're very generous with your partner. Oh, there's another piece. <laughs> I'm already thinking like six different things ahead. So, and if you, by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I tend to have this thing where I start getting downloads and stuff in the middle of my talks. And sometimes it goes totally off, off, to, the, off to the left field. And sometimes it's like down deeper than I plan on going. So let me play with this one first of all. Generosity in a relationship could sound like, well, you know, you give to your partner all the time or you, you, you make love to your partner all the time or you sell them you love them all the time. That's great if you know their love language. So I'm going to play with that initially. This is not part of the main talk, but it hit, hit me as a big point, which is if you don't know the love languages, five love languages from um, um, uh, Chapman. That's his first name. <laughs> Gary Chapman, that was it. Gary Chapman um, wrote a book called five, The Five Love Languages. You can do the test online. I mean, it's five love languages, either the number or the letters, either way. You can do the test for yourself and know what love language you have predominantly. But if your partner and you have different love languages and you don't know what they are, you may be being generous with your partner, but they won't feel it or experience it or receive it and vice versa. So knowing love languages will help you be generous effectively because there's two, you know, you'd be generous that's just giving, 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 but it's so overwhelming for some people. They don't understand what to do with it. They don't feel it, they don't receive it. But if you give in alignment to their love language, which is worth doing the homework to find out, they will feel loved. They will be supported. They will feel totally received. Excuse me. They, they will receive you totally. I flipped the wrong way around. But that brings me to another point. And this is going to sound weird as to say it, but bear with me. Are you generous in receiving? Hmm, you might think, what does that mean? See, we look at generosity as being something you give all the time. You give away, you give more, and you give more, and you give more. But also, or as, what, as a recommendation, sometimes being generous means that you're willing to receive from others. One of my earlier challenges was I wasn't feeling safe enough to let people in to receive from them. So I'd always be giving, 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 and almost, almost as a defense. If I keep giving, 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 I create this wall of givingness that nobody can get through. And so in some of my relationships, I know I didn't let them in. And I basically was always giving subconsciously to keep them out. So being generous can also be generous to receive. And if you can receive, if you can actually let them give to you, that's a very generous act of receptivity. So that's two things to play with. So five love, five love languages and then generosity to receive. Then on the other side of things, there are some people out there who are just selfish SOBs, <laughs> just to put it bluntly. And this... Um <laughs> This, this, I'm trying to say, I don't know, I'll say this nicely. Well, I just didn't, I didn't say it nice initially, so let me continue down the same vein. There are people out there who are absolutely going to suck you dry energetically. They're going to take, take, take from you so that your generosity, well, actually, let me say, 
Yeah, okay, I'm just making sure I did. I was. I thought I took a detour, make sure I'm on the track. So there are those people out there, just to reframe what I'm saying, who are totally willing to receive and take, take, take with no desire or intention to give back. That's an imbalance in the generosity piece. It's, it's almost like, well, there's a word that we use a lot in the spiritual community. It's called abundance, or a word that is named abundance. And abundance in theory, or in principle, is a cycle of giving and receiving. Which is why I talk about being generous and receiving, because if someone's giving and you're not receiving them, then you're blocking them out, as I said, which is what I did. So being in a place of giving and receiving is the true cycle of me, for my mind, generosity on both sides. Generous in giving, generous in receiving. That's a healthy way to be. There are people out there, though, who will take, 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 not receive, but take, who are not somebody you really want to give to because they'll basically drain you like a vampire drains a victim, energetically speaking, of course. Yeah, just being clear about that. So the understanding is that you want to be with somebody who's not going to be just taking, taking, taking from you because that's no longer generosity. That's being victimized. So it's understanding the principle of being generous to the place of giving from your overflow because that's another piece. Back it up a bit. Here we go. Another... There's a lot of spokes in this. So here's another spoke on this. It's healthier, it may not be easy, but it's healthier to give once you're already full. So being generous and giving, giving, giving may seem like a way to get validation or a way to make yourself feel valuable or to give yourself a sense of meaning or purpose. If you're not giving to yourself first and fill up your own tanks, there's a whole other level, by the way, of generosity to yourself, getting to that one too, then you're going to drain yourself in the process. And that's not healthy. So generosity has to be self-inflicted <laughs> self-inflicted first when you totally get to the point where you realize that you are absolutely clear that your generosity feel, feeds from um, sorry expresses from your overflow where you're already filling up first and you're feeling yourself be more aligned to who you are then you're actually thriving more healthily healthfully healthily healthfully I'm not sure which in a healthy way, put it simple. So my invitation to you in all these different levels is first, give to yourself, be generous with who you are, generous in your self-care, generous in your self-appreciation, generous in your self-love, generous in your self-support so that you can feel what it feels like, and then generous in your giving with discernment that you're giving to someone who can receive it in a way that is, is generous as well. Ideally, in all this conversation, you're seeing the points about being the, the generous receiver, and a generous giver that are healthy after you give to yourself first. If you're the receiver, you can also give to yourself first, so you're receiving an abundance that's already there. If you're waiting for the other person to give to you and you're not doing it for yourself, that's codependency. Another symptom of codependency, by the way, and I've talked about that at length in other broadcasts, I'm not going to do it here, except to say that when you are already filled up fully, then you're no longer in a place of codependency because you don't need the other person. Excuse me. <clears throat> late lunch <laughs> apologies for that so my my encouragement in this context is to have a clear understanding that your ability to receive is predicated on the ability one to be generous in your receptivity and two to already have fed yourself to fill yourself up to, to be generous with yourself first and I'm going to put some links in the comments because, of course, I always do that because call to action is why I do these talks to give you something to work with, some homework and some practices. So I'll put the self-love meditation in the practice, self-love guided meditation in the comments because that's one of the tools you can use to refuel and regenerate yourself to become more generous with yourself and other people. I'm getting like five keys here, so hopefully it's making sense. So um, I'm not going to recap them now because I've forgotten two of them already, but they're in the broadcast. You can watch them in the beginning if you're catching it coming in late. But generosity is an interesting quality to play with. Again, giving and receiving. Filling up first so you can give from an overflow versus giving from emptiness where you end up being drained and worn out. Generosity is a functional, effective tool you can use in everyday life, in your relationships, social, romantic, business, all of those. And with the caveat that you give to yourself first all the time. When you do that first, life will change for the better. When you do that first, you become more fulfilled. When you do that first, you'll turn off any sense of need for anybody else. And when you do that first, you'll be in a place where you actually get what you want in life, in love, in every area. And that's what I encourage you to do. So having said all that, I think I've given you enough to play with. There's at least five different ideas to play with, and that should spark some interest for you. If you want to get some help, reach out to me. I will leave, comment, leave links in the comments, again, for my self-love meditation, because that's one of those teachings and places, places you can work to refuel yourself and regenerate who you are, to be more generous in giving and receiving. Um, 
I told you about the five love languages. I recommend you check that out if you're in a relationship or if you want to be in a relationship to know what your own five love languages are and your partner so you know how to give to them in a way that is receptive, sorry, received, and you can give from a place that is effective too. So, so you already know that. So I gave the link, gave the link already. So self-love meditation, um, discover session with me. That's one of my gifts. If you want to reach out for that, that's my generosity, of course, to give them my time. Um, sign up for one of those. That'll be in the comments too. I did mention my books. So that'll be in the comments as well. Um, that'll do. Those three links will keep you busy. Um, but this is the thing. I'm, the questions I said at the beginning in the title and I said in this broadcast, I invite you to reflect on those. Consider for yourself where you can be more generous to yourself and more generous to your relationships that is in a way that's healthy. Because here's a PS. I mentioned earlier about giving, giving, giving. We do have a tendency, I know I've been drained before because I overgave in service orientation where I was helping out and serving different places where I'd be used up and not in a place that was effective because I felt myself being actually worn out and drained. It wasn't effective. So understanding and remembering to align yourself to your givingness that is in a healthy connection to who your fullness is then you're going to be a healthy place. Sorry, another, another <laughs> they keep dropping in. Another piece of the puzzle. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to put this in there too. So I'm still teaching apparently, it's coming through. Um, in the spiritual teachings, we understand that we are infinite beings. In the spiritual teachings, we are one with spirit, which is infinite. So we are infinite beings. And having, we're having we're, as one of my teachings talks about, we're spiritual beings having human experience. So yes, we may be infinite in the infinite nature of whatever the universe is. I'm getting woo-woo on, you know, it's Sunday, so we're going to spiritual. However, in a physical form, in a human form, there's only a limit to what we can produce and give and serve and express without refueling. So it may mean that you spend time with yourself in contemplation, in meditation, to refuel, to reconnect. That's an option too. My self-love meditation is kind of like that. It's a meditation practice to practice loving yourself and connecting to yourself to bring yourself home to yourself. A lot of self stuff here. So you can have what you want. So just another piece, of, piece to put on the puzzle. So your homework, should you choose to accept, is to focus on where you are generous with yourself and where you're not, where you can be more generous with yourself and then where you can be more generous with other people. Align to their values, align to your values, align to your love languages. It all makes sense, I trust. So let me know how this goes for you. I'd love to hear from you. And if you have questions about this broadcast, please put them below. Okay, there'll be links in the comments I mentioned for self-love meditation, my book, and a real reach out to me for a conversation. And if you have, oh, replays. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page. I put the um, replays on my business page, on Facebook, and onto my YouTube channel as well. So I'll give you the place to find them. So if you want to join me live at 5 p.m. Pacific time, you can go to my personal page, which is facebook.com slash Barry Selby. The replay is going to be a business page, which is barryselby.author. So you can subscribe, to, you can like my page, there you go, and watch the replays there, although not all of them are there, only the most, the last three or four hundred of them. Only the last three or four hundred of them. But if you want to watch all 800, or you want to scan back to my early ones to see how I was at the beginning, you can have fun with that. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can watch all of my replays on my playlist called Messages for the Masculine. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you do that. And on the playlist, you can go through the titles and scan through all of them to find the ones that speak out to you. There's 870 something to look at. So plenty of topics to play with, plenty of things to look to work through, and plenty of support for you out there as well. That's my gift to you. That's my generosity at play. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. More to talk about, I'm sure. And uh, again, message me if you have any questions. If you want to put anything below, I'll respond and sign off. Links will be in the comments. Check them out. And I'll see you again soon. Take care of yourself. Bye.